Ah, greetings everybody and welcome back. All right, just to let you know, I didn't let you know on the other uh, video, uh, the list of questions, take notes using those questions. So if you didn't use those questions before, go back and use those questions. Those questions verbatim will be the questions on the orientation exam. So as you are watching this video, take questions according to uh, what you see, t take notes, use those notes. Um, when you take the orientation exams, the questions will not be any different. Okay, so here we go. Once you have passed the orientation exam, this link right here, course content, will be made available to you. So click there. And this is what you will see. You will see um, the course schedule right here. Uh, uh, essay exams uh, per unit, which I'll show you in just a little bit, but you might want to cl click that and print it on out so you just have a list of it. Um, but every week has a to-do list going all the way down to week seven, uh, week eight. I'll tell you what that is in just a second. But uh, yeah, you'll have an idea exactly what is in each um, learning module for the week and what you need to do and what is actually do. So you'll notice right here, read chapter one, take quiz, read chapter two, take quiz, view, read lecture on slavery, race, and class, R practice writing essay one for schedu the scheduled exam, which um, let me show you when that is. To, to see that, you just click here and it bounces you down to the course schedule inside the syllabus. And uh, here is the first exam right there, exam one, April 7th, right? So you want to have all of your essays completed by then because they will be randomly selected. I'll talk more about that in just a little bit. So go ahead and click here. I have always a goofy uh, picture right there of a video. This kind of gives you a heads up what you need to do for the week. And I have extra credit questions sometimes available within the videos. So uh, do, cl do listen to this for the extra credit question and take the extra credit and I'll apply it usually to the upcoming exam. All right, so here we go. Um, First thing you want to do is the textbook reading always when it, if it's when and if it is assigned usually every week there's a couple of chapters assigned click here chapter 1 and go ahead and read that there's primary sources right here uh, primary sources are documents that were produced created during the historical time in which you are studying so they're documents, they are journals, they are laws, they are maps, um, whatever the case may be. Right? And secondary sources, just so you know, there's primary and secondary sources. Secondary sources are, well, all of this stuff here, textbooks, um, documentaries, videos, news stories about history, whatever it is. Stuff written after the fact by historians or journalists or just anybody in the making history business. Right? And what they do is they use primary sources to create a historical narrative. So read through the text that's required. The videos are not necessarily required in the textbook, but they are very helpful. Um, they are helpful to use for your discussion posts. They are helpful to use for your essay exams, any information you get from here. Um, but scrolling all the way down, going through the information and then when you are done you will be ready for the quiz which is available down here all the way at the bottom here we go okay click the quiz take the quiz and make sure you click finish at the end of which will be at the bottom of the page click finish uh, to, to submit it if you don't see the the finish button then try a different browser usually in mozilla you will see the finish browser if you don't s always check to see if that finish browser finish button is there before taking the quiz because if it's not there is something wrong okay so you're going to do the same for chapter two um, this week you have a lecture to go through you have lecture instructions right here this is the way it works for every week so i'm just showing you real quick here um, Every lecture part, so you'll notice there's a part one and a part two right here for the lecture, ha comes with a prompt. So number one uh, corresponds with part one right here. Um, and part two corresponds right here. All right, so you want to click that. 
Um, click this one right here. That's the prompt that I was just highlighting before. Discuss the background of when, how, and why Jamestown was founded. Um, be sure to discuss the challenges and success of the early settlers faced in the first few years, so on and so forth. Watch the lecture. The lectures are required to watch. Read the content. Take notes specifically, of course, in relation to this prompt right here. When you're done doing that, do the same for this part right here. There'll be a prompt available. View the video, view, read the notes, and take notes according to that. So what I recommend is having a, a notebook physically write down the prompt and then take notes accordingly. If you physically write down the prompt, you will be more aware of what it is you should be um, looking for as you're going through the material in order to construct your essay exam. Your essay exam, if you look back here, I'm going to go back to course content, always in the to-do list, or you actually can get it right here. Let me go there. The to-do list is in two places. If you look right here, this essay prompt right here is a general uh, prompt of those two learning objective prompts per lecture, right? If you have notes on both of the learning objective prompts from, from the uh, lecture parts, you will have a response to this essay prompt right here. This essay prompt will show up during the exams. So you're not submitting this essay. Take note of that. You are not submitting this essay you will be, these essays will be randomly selected throughout the semester. So for instance, exam one, there are three lectures you need to prepare for. Two of those essay prompts will be randomly selected. Two of the essays will be randomly selected of the three for you to respond to during the exam. So a window will open up. It will have this essay prompt. Uh, let me go back here actually. Let me show you all of the essay prompts together. Just click course content right there. Got back. Uh, at exam essays per unit. Go ahead and click that. And it shows you per unit when all of the essay exams are, are um, and what they are. So for unit one, you're going to have slave, slavery, race, and class, salutary neglect, and the American Revolution. So for exam one, two of these essay prompts will be randomly selected. I highly suggest looking at them beforehand so you know what it is to, you're going to be looking for. The bulk of the information to respond to this is going to come directly from the lectures. But I do take a look to see if you have gone to the chapters, assigned chapters. Please don't pull stuff from other sources. Um, you have all of the information you need from the textbook and the assigned lectures. Um, first and foremost, use the lectures. The lectures will guide you in responding to the essay prompts. And then use the chapters as well. There's primary sources and secondary sources that have information that will help you respond that is just basically kind of kudos and will help you as long as you've got the fundamental information that comes from the lectures. So they all work that way, right? Um, and then going forward, looking at the syllabus, if you look at, I'll bring up the syllabus, and this will definitely be an exam question. Notice, exam one has all the information. You have, um, two, it says two essays will be randomly selected from unit one. You'll have three hours to complete it. Must be taken in one setting. Uh, Blackboard must be opened in Lockdown Browser. Two attempts possible. Now take note why that is. It's not necessarily that I grade it twice, although sometimes I will if I can get to it early enough, but no guarantees. Usually I grade the last attempt, um, assuming that you're taking two attempts because you needed to. The reason why I give two attempts is, uh, is to foresee any technical problems you might have. So if you're going to take the exam and the internet goes out on you, you just have to take the exam again, right? That kind of a thing. Um, 
So that's why there's two attempts. This saves you just from having to email me and, and explaining what happened um, and having me to reopen it up, right? So anticipate that. Do try to take the exams before the day they are due because sometimes technical problems happen that you don't anticipate, right? Now note here, exam two, there are two parts, right? Part one will have one essay randomly selected from unit one. And part two will have two essays randomly selected from unit two. Um, and this is where these are the lectures and essay prompts for unit two right here, which will be available right you'll notice unit two right you go through weeks one week two week three that's all unit one and then you get down to week four that's the beginning of unit two so all of the weeks will be labeled for which unit it is and so on and so forth uh let's see anything else about the exams uh yeah take notes prepare them ahead of time because they will be randomly selected the other thing about the exams and I'll, I'll tell you all about the other assignments, too, as far as what happens if you miss them or get a score that you wish you got a higher score on. Let's say you take exam one um, and you didn't like the score or you meant to take exam one, but you forgot about the due date or you got sick or whatever the case is. Um, this is college. You don't need to email me and give me an, a reason, an excuse, a valid reason, an invalid reason or anything like that. What happens is that because during the exams, I'm going to require you to respond to previously assigned essays from previous units. Um, I will give you the benefit of the doubt that you have prepared uh, and revised and all of that and will replace your um, next score with your previous score minus 10%. So how does that work out? Well, let's say you didn't do exam one when it was due uh, again on, uh, where is the course schedule? It's right here. Nope, right here. There we go. So yeah, it's due April 7th. April 7th comes and go and you forgot about it or you got sick or uh, the internet was down on that day and you waited till that day to do it and you couldn't do it, right? Well, exam two comes along and you've prepared, you've gone through unit one, you've gone through unit two, and you do very well. You got a zero on exam one, but for exam two, you get a 95%. Exam one will become an 85%. This will work for exam three. Let's say you don't do both of these exams. I don't recommend doing that, but in case that happens, uh, circumstances sometimes happen, exam three will count for exam two, exam one minus 10%. And there's another catch-all. There's a makeup exam that will be expire May 11th. Uh, that one will count for all three exams, minus 5% for any missed or lower scored exams. Right, so let's say you struggle throughout the semester, you get a 60% on exam one, a 65% on exam two, exam three, you get a 75%, you're starting to figure it out. You hit the books between May 5th and May 11th, maybe even get to it a little earlier on May 9th. You've really studied, you prepared all of your essays. Um, whatever ran is randomly selected for the makeup exam, there will be four, to just to let you know, there will be four essays randomly selected from unit one and unit two, and four essays randomly, or two essays randomly selected from unit three. And you end up getting a 95%. That will apply to all previous exams minus, not 10%, but just 5%. So it's a great opportunity if you happen to, if life gets in the way, you just needed a break without having to email me and explain whatever reason uh, comes up. Um, the other assignments, quizzes and discussions, there are no makeups for quizzes or discussions. If you miss it, you miss it. But what I do do is I take a, I will, uh, um, not count, I'll throw out your lowest score for the discussions and I'll throw out your lowest score for a quiz. So if that happens just to be a quiz you didn't get to uh, or miss the deadline, then that'll just be your lowest score. So you get kind of a freebie. If you miss another one, well, it won't be such a detriment to your grade uh, if you're just missing one or two for the semester. If you're missing more than two, then it starts to add up. Okay, 
I think that's about it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So take your orientation exam. Uh, there's extra credit for those that um, get it done uh, successfully. If you don't get it done successfully, uh, you won't be allowed to continue in the course, so you got to do it anyway. Uh, for those that do get it done on Monday, um, I will throw in an additional 5% extra credit, not towards your total grade, <laughs> uh, but towards uh, exam one. Exam one. So if you get it done Monday, the first day, which is when everybody should be striving to do it, uh, when Blackboard is available to you on March 20th um, at 11 at 12:01 a.m. March 20th, it'll be available. The course will be available to you through Blackboard. Um, if you get it done Monday uh, with a 100% or higher, 5% extra credit will be made available to you for Exam One. Other than that, go forth and be great. Do get me on Selly. I I would prefer if you got signed up for Selly right away uh, before the semester started. Uh, that way, if you're reading through the syllabus and have questions, um, you'll let me know because I am sending all of this information out to you uh, right before spring break. So you'll have a good seven days to get through the orientation and you'll be ready for the exam as soon as the course is available to you through Blackboard. So let me know if you have any questions via email or through Selly. Take care. Goodbye.